you know that computers are the most versatile machines ever invented? Have you ever wondered how they can store thousands of songs in your pocket? Or how that invisible thing called software really works? Follow me as we track down the ghost in the machine. And welcome to the ghost in the machine. Computers are extraordinary things. They can simulate virtual worlds with impressive realism. They can play chess better than almost any human. They can even tell us our position anywhere on the planet to within a few meters. So is there no limit to the capabilities of computers? Well perhaps there is. Later we'll see how a simple jigsaw puzzle with just a few dozen pieces might defeat the world's most powerful computer. So how are computers able to do these extraordinary things? And why do they also have limitations? Well, to find out, we're going to explore something very special in this lecture. You can't see it, and you can't touch it. But without it, the digital revolution would never have happened. To help us understand what this is, please welcome gastronaut Stefan Gates. Stefan, welcome. What is it you're making? Uh, well, uh, we're going to make um, an ice cream. It's going to be the world's most adventurous ice cream. Uh, we start off with one of these. This is a creme anglaise, uh, which is basically custard to you and me. Um, and that's a bit of uh, egg, milk and cream. Now, we add to that some lemongrass, very fragrant, very nice, and some lime zest, very zesty but not very adventurous yet. So I thought what we'd add is a poisonous bottom-dwelling sea monster. This is jellyfish. Really tasty. Uh, not actually poisonous, this one. It's a special one that's uh, used for uh, cooking in China. We're going to add that in. And then, to justify my wearing a white coat and goggles, we're going to freeze it in the quickest method on the planet. This is by adding liquid nitrogen in at minus 196 degrees centigrade. OK, Lisa, let's go. OK, that's going to take a moment. So while we're waiting, we can okay. think of this as a bit like a computer. Stefan and his utensils are the hardware. They're like the processor and the hard disk of a computer. There's something else that's essential, and that's the recipe. Now, Stefan has kindly given me the recipe for jellyfish ice cream, and here it is. The first step is to mix the lime and the chopped jellyfish and so on into the mixture. The second step is to add liquid nitrogen and stir. Looks spectacular. OK, and the third step is to test to see if it's cold enough. If it is cold enough, we stop because we're finished. If it's not cold enough, we go back to step two, add more liquid nitrogen and stir, and then we test again in step three. OK, it looks like it's ready. I'm dying to try some. There we are. Fantastic. It's still hissing a bit. Is that OK? Uh, no, it's not. You're right. a little bit scaredy cat. OK, oh, no, I'm not scaredy cat. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. It's very unusual. It's extremely... <laughs> it's actually very good. It's extremely good. Who wants to try some? Who's brave enough to try some? You are first. Go on, you have a little go. How's that? Not bad? Not bad at all. Pretty good, huh? OK, good. So a recipe is a series of instructions. And a computer also needs a series of instructions in order to process data. Now, together, the recipe and the data form the software. Of course, this cooking recipe has just three steps. But the recipe for a computer would be much more complex. It would have millions of steps. Stefan, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, the recipes that computers use are called algorithms. And to help explain this, I'm going to need five volunteers. I think we have five people already lined up. So if you five would like to come on down, <laughs> you'd like to just come and stand, just stand there, form a line. That's good. If you just bunch up nice and close to each other. Excellent. OK. Now, I have here some cards with letters on. I'd just like you to hold those up in front of you like that. Just 
Nice and high, that's good. There we go. Okay, so what we have here are the letters A to E, but they're all jumbled up. Now, something that computers do all the time is to sort things. For instance, if you bring up a list of your friends on your mobile phone, then you'll probably like them in alphabetical order. So I'm going to show you a simple computational recipe that will sort these letters into the right order. So here it is. So the first step is to start with the item that's on your left, that's the one at this end. The next step is to take each item in turn down the line and compare it with the next item on the right. And if they're not in the right order, we're going to swap them. And the third step is to ask, are all the items in order? If they are, we're finished and we stop. If they're not, then we go back to step one and we repeat it all again. OK, so let's give that a try. So step one, we start with the item on the left, we compare with the one on the right. Now those are in the correct order, so we'll leave those where they are. Let's look at the next two items. Are they in the right order? No, they're not. So what we'll do is I'd like you two to swap places, please. OK, that's good. We compare the next items. They're not in the right order either, so I'd like you two to swap places. And finally, these two, they're not in the right order, so you two need to swap places as well. OK, that's excellent. So that takes us on to step three. Are they all in the right order? Well, no, they're not. So we go back up to step one and do it all again. So let's compare you two. You're not in the right order, so you two can swap places. And yes, you're in the right order. That's good. You two are not in the right place, so if you two could swap. And you two look good. So we go back now to step three. Are they all in the right order? Yes, they are. So we're done. OK, excellent. Thanks very much. You can take your letters back to your seats with you. So software is based on recipes or algorithms. But how are software and data represented inside the computer? Well, I'd like you all to shout out the answer to the following question. How far can you count on the fingers and thumbs of two hands? Ten. Ten. Okay, most people said ten though, I think. I'm going to show you a really simple but really powerful way of counting which would allow you to count to over a thousand on the fingers and thumbs of two hands. And for this I need four people who I think are already uh, picked out, who are sat there. Who are the four people we picked out earlier? That's it, you come on, come on down. <laughs> if you like to form a line along there. That's it, just stand a line. We'll just move slightly that way, that's it. Keep bunched up close together, that's good. OK, so I'm going to give you some cards to hold. Uh, that's yours, you hold that one there, that's yours. That's yours, and that's yours. OK, and you notice each card has twice as many dots as the card on the right. Now, each of you is going to be a binary digit, or a bit. And in this powerful way of counting, each bit is either on or off. So if I could just borrow that for a moment. When you're on, that means your dots are facing forward. And when you're off, that means the black side is facing forward. Okay? And if I tap you on the shoulder at any point, I want you just to turn your cards over. Okay? If I tap you on the shoulder again, turn the cards over. Okay? You all got that? Okay, there we go. So at the moment, you're all on. And we can work out what that represents by just adding up the dots. So we've got 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, and 1 is 15. So that's binary for 15. OK, let me try tapping you and you on the shoulder. Good. So this is now on, off, off, on, which is 8 plus 1. That's binary for 9. Now, as well as using on and off, we sometimes also use 1 and naught. So this could also be written as 1, naught, naught, 1. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that we have one lot of eight, no lots of four, no lots of two, and one lot of one. Now, if that sounds a bit strange, it's actually just like ordinary decimal numbers. So here's a, here's a decimal number. This is 2,037. And what that means is that I have two lots of 1,000, no lots of 100, three lots of 10, and seven lots of one. OK, let's see if we can uh, count in binary now. So I'm going to tap you on the shoulder and you. So you're all off at the moment. That's zero. And to get a one, we do that. And that's a two. Excellent. That's a three. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, uh, eleven. Right, OK, you're ahead of me there. Twelve. Good. Uh, Thirteen. Yes, yeah, keep going. Fourteen. And fifteen. Is that right? Yes. Excellent. Well done. Thank you very much. So take your cards back to the seat.
OK, it was excellent. So there we had just four bits. Now, computers usually work with groups of eight bits, and we call that a byte. Now, because four bits is half a byte, we call that a nibble. <laughs> okay. Now, each time we add an extra bit, we can count twice as far. So if somebody asks you, how far can you count on the fingers and thumbs of two hands? The answer is not 10. With 10 bits, you can count all the way from 0 up to 1,023. Now, so let's suppose that everybody in these three rows of the lecture theatre were a binary digit or a bit. Well, together, you'd be able to count to over 2 million. What about if everybody in the lecture theatre were a binary digit? There are just over 300 of you. Well, this is how far we could count with 300 bits. Here it is. It's a big number. Here are the thousands. Those are the millions, uh, billions, tri trillions. Um, keep going. My goodness. OK, this is, a, this is a seriously big number. This number has 90 digits. In fact, <laughs> in fact, this number is too big to handle, obviously. This number is bigger than the number of atoms in the universe. And that's with just 300 bits. So we've seen that computers follow recipes or algorithms, and we've seen how numbers can be represented as binary digits or bits. But to build a computer, we actually need to store the data inside the computer in some way. And to find out how we can do that, join me after the break. <laughs>